Just as you're about to celebrate having made it through, the world is turned upside down by a global pandemic. And given the current state of the world, that may be kind of scary. But I hope it's also inspiring. To all the graduates of 2020, like all of you, I'm also missing my graduation ceremony this year. And we are not alone. Across the world, COVID-19 has forced more than 1 billion students out of school. But many girls, especially in developing countries, may never return to the classroom. Because of this crisis, they will be forced into early marriages or low-paying jobs to support their families. So I ask you to remember them today. As you go out and change the world, don't leave them behind. The class of 2020 won't be defined by what we lost to this virus, but by how we responded to it. Some tips of advice I can give you, just keep on trucking. Keep on going, moving to the moon. Do not microwave metal, not even a tiny spoon, because um, that will pack a punch. You know, uh, Andy knows this. I yes. actually get asked every year to give commencement speeches, but they're usually during the week and I can't do it because it's the same time that I, I take the show. And uh, also I have a fear of getting hit in the eye with one of those graduation caps because they're extremely pointy <laughs> and no one really pays attention. They just the them in the air and... Hello class of 2020. This is your Cookie Mencement speaker, Cookie Monster, here to congratulate you on graduation. Be so impressed because all of you are showing that you some pretty tough cookies. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, because me prepared an inspiring speech, perfect for occasion. You're gonna love it. Where is speech? Okay, apparently me ate inspirational speech. <laughs> but that's okay, because this actual life lesson, yeah, always be ready to wing it. Sometimes you may eat your own words. So that's actually two lessons. You know, you are all a lot like cookies. Yeah, yeah, you know, there are even two cookies in 2020. Cookie, cookie. Yeah, good luck. Your future look delicious. And so does this cookie. I'm not going to stand here today and bore you about this being a fantastic time to graduate. This virus won't be the last obstacle that you will face, but it can prepare you for the next one. Let me, for instance, tell you a story about one of the biggest obstacles that I faced just two years ago. We were literally four months from shooting Terminator 6, Dark Fate. The doctor said to me, he says, you know, everything is perfect except that I'm worried about your heart valve. You should have it replaced. The next thing I know is, is I go to the hospital, I wake up 16 hours later, the doctor tells me, I'm sorry, Albert, but we had to perform open heart surgery to save your life because something went wrong with the non-invasive surgery. I always had a very clear vision of me being on that set of Terminator on August 1st. I concentrated on that vision in everything that I did. So sure enough, comes August 1st, I'm there in Budapest on a set of Terminator 6, the director, Tim Miller said to me, says, Arnold, you machine. He says, no, I'm just back. Life will always throw an obstacle in your path, like it was with my heart surgery or with your graduation. But if you have a vision, a very clear vision of exactly where you want to go and what you want to do, then it's the problem. Dear graduates, you are the answer to a generation of prayers. But know that stepping out is the best thing you can do for self-discovery. I know how hard it is to step out and bet on yourself. If you're a part of a group that's called Other, a group that does not get the chance to be center stage, build your own stage and make them see you. Your queerness is beautiful. Now, if you've ever been called dumb, unattractive, overweight, unworthy, untalented, well, so have I. Whatever you do, don't let negativity of people projecting their own self-doubts on you deter you from your focus. I'm often asked, what's your secret to success? The shorter answer, put in that work and keep betting on yourself. 
Hi everybody, we're the Simpsons, and we have a special message for the class of 2020. Mom? I can't cook anymore. I can't cook anymore. Bart, what do you have to say to the class of 2020? I don't know what to do. I guess it's up to me. Do you want eggs? Our message to you in these times, love your neighbor, even if it's Flanders. Six thousand seven hundred and sixty-five. Good luck on your journey. One, two, three. I'd like to take a moment and give a personal note of congratulations. Difficult times end. Whatever that time frame is, a minute, a week, two weeks, a month, three months from now, the time will end and you will open into a new phase of life. And that's exciting. Congratulations, class of 2020. Well done. Hello, everyone, and congratulations to the class of 2020. I don't think this is the graduation ceremony any of you imagine. In bleak moments like these, it can be difficult to find hope. So let me skip right to the end and tell you what happens. You will prevail. The reason I know you'll prevail is because so many others have done it before you. 100 years ago, the class of 1920 graduated into the end of a deadly pandemic. 50 years ago, the class of 1970 graduated in the midst of Vietnam War. And nearly 20 years ago, the class of 2001 graduated just months before 9-11. So be hopeful. There are probably things about technology that frustrate you and make you impatient. Don't lose that impatience. It'll create the next technology revolution and enable you to build things my generation could never dream of. You will make the world better in your own way, even if you don't know exactly how. The important thing is to be open-minded so that you can find what you love. So take the time to find the thing that excites you more than anything else in the world. Not the thing your parents want you to do, or the thing that all your friends are doing, or that society expects of you. I know you're getting a lot of advice today, so let me leave you with mine. Be open, be impatient, be hopeful. If you can do that, history will remember the class of 2020, not for what you lost, but for what you changed. You have the chance to change everything. Thank you. We're at our best when life is easy, but what about when life is hard? That's when true character reveals itself. Life is not where you've been, but what you go through. And the first chapter of your life story will be written at least partly based on how you respond to this adversity. So stay strong, stay positive, and stay inspired, because a great story can inspire the world. It's me, Jack Black. I just want to say congratulations to the 2020 graduating class. You did it! Yes! Now listen, stay smart, stay compassionate, and work hard. Everything else will fall into place, believe me. Are you ready for life's next chapter? I know I wasn't when I was your age. I was scared. I was like, what if I fail? And luckily, I had some great teachers that gave me the confidence to take the plunge. Now I'm encouraging you to take the plunge. You know what I mean? Yeah!
parents, faculty, family members, and friends of the visionaries, the Sherman Oaks Center of Enriched Studies class of 2020. Our school mission is to develop future global citizens with active and creative minds, a sense of understanding and compassion for others, and the courage to act on their beliefs. We were charged with helping you become critical thinkers and productive and responsible members of society. Only time will tell if we have done our job. Many of you have called this your home away from home for the past nine years. When you arrived at SOSIS, George W. Bush was president and the country was starting to see signs of what would become the Great Recession. You are now at home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been a tumultuous year and it will continue to be so for the foreseeable future. For some, one of your first acts as global citizens would be to vote to retain the 45th president of the United States or to vote in the 46th. I strongly encourage you to make your voice heard. When I first came to Sherman Oaks Center for Enriched Studies, I was asked what I liked best about it. The answer then, as it is now, is the student's diversity. The world is a multi-ethnic, multi-racial conglomeration of political, economic, and religious systems, and our school's unique diversity has given you an unparalleled opportunity to share classes and have conversations with students who have varied political philosophies, differing economic backgrounds, and pray in different houses of worship and represent more than 60 nationalities. Even more significant, you have proven that we can all get along. You stand as models to the students who will follow you in the years to come. We send you on with a deeper understanding of human nature, and we hope with a sense of your place in the world. The tools you have forged here, your communication and problem solving skills, will be tested at home as you continue on your chosen path be it at a college or university, the workforce, or a combination thereof. You have worked hard and persevered and maintained committed to attaining your goals. If you culminated from eighth grade here at Sherman Oaks CES, I reminded you then that it may take a village to raise a child, but it also takes some cajoling, pleading, threats, and rewards, timeouts, and patience, and many late nights spent worrying about creating a graduate. That being said, please remember to thank your parents, family members, teachers, and counselors for their significant contribution to your success. Because we all know there was a lot of cajoling and pleading over the last three months to stay focused. And yet as we celebrate your academic achievements, as well as your collective diversity and individuality, we also acknowledge that something else binds you to the past and future graduating classes. You will always be nice. For those whose older siblings graduated from here, you probably have some understanding of what I what this means. There is something special about Sherman Oaks CES, something that you are a part of, and it is unlike what most high school graduates feel about their alma mater. Some of you have spent between one third and one half of your life with your fellow visionaries. Knights have a responsibility to do good in the world, to stand by their fellow man or woman, and to be there for each other. At some point, there will come a time when you will be called upon to be a knight in shining armor for a classmate, a friend, or even a stranger. I hope, we hope, that you will step up to the challenge. Before I close, I want to thank you for all the experiences you've shared with me during the five years that I've been your principal. You have been frustrating at times and tremendous, tremendously inspiring at others. Your potential for doing good in the world is unbounded. I hope that you will take whatever you've learned here and make it for the betterment of all. You are and should be a catalyst for change. In the aftermath of the process we've watched these past couple of weeks, it will be you who instigate the changes necessary to make this a truly democratic society. Okay. This is a vision I know you have the tools to forge. In closing, I leave you tonight with the following advice. One, if you do not go after what you want, you will never get it. Two, if you do not ask, the answer is always no. And three, if you do not take a step forward, you will stand, be standing in the same spot. Congratulations, visionaries. The 2020 Knights of Sherman Oak Center 
friend read studies. Good evening. I would now like to bring up Adam Rutan, the salutatorian for the class of 2020, the visionary.